So this gives you a very small number, um, like 0, 0, 0, 2, 3 or something. So in order to get DPMO or EPMO, you need to multiply with 6, 0, which is 1 million. Okay, that will give you the the number of mistakes they will be making in every 1 million opportunities. Do you think this is big? Yeah, maybe if it's your baggage, it's going to be huge. Okay, so uh, to understand the measurement system performance, you kind of have to understand this fundamental. So whatever variance, whatever level of whatever variance that is captured in your system that may not reflect the true system variation or variance i mean it always get confused about this the variation is the level of difference right the variance is actually the statistic statistics that used to capture the variation so the whatever that is documented or captured in your system that is actually a result of combination of two different type of uh, variation. One is the process itself. The other one is coming from the measurement. Okay, sometimes measurement itself can increase the variance so that your captured variance may not, may not be necessarily the correct, the true process variance. So this is a fundamental insight and let's move on. So for that reason, we kind of studied a little bit of uh, metrology, okay, metrology. It is a science of collection of people, equipment, facility, method, and procedure that used to ensure the correctness or accuracy of the measurement. So whenever we talk about the measurement, we, we focus on uh, two areas, okay? We'd like to have a measurement tool that is accurate, Okay, that is very precise. They may sound similar, but these captures very different idea. So for example, when we try to measure something repeatedly, when we try to measure something repeatedly, if you look at the uh, A, the so true value is here, but when you measure the same true value multiple times, you see, the actual average of the distribution is here. So it means it is not a very accurate measurement tool, whatever you use it to measure this. That is not a very accurate measurement tool, okay? Your true value is here, the average of your measurement is here, it is not very accurate. But is it also precise? It is spread it to five different bars. So in terms of precision, it is not. So precision is defined as a closeness of repeated measurements to each other. If you compare this, it is still not very accurate because average is here, true average is here. However, this is slightly better than this in terms of the precision. The each repeated measurement, each repeated measures are close to each other. Therefore, you're seeing less bar here. Let's move on to here. It is very accurate because the average of the distribution overlaps with a true average. However, it is not a very precise measurement, okay? So if you move on to the next one, this is both true, this is both accurate and both precise uh, measurement, okay? So here, in addition to this accuracy and precision concept, I hope you can also get familiar with this thing called a repeated measure, okay? Repeated measure. You measure same thing repeatedly, okay? Because you know that there is a chance with each measure comes with an error, okay? So if you measure something repeatedly, there's a chance for you to control that measurement error, okay? So I'm not going to discuss the technical details that uh, you can use to control for the uh, measurement error, but at least you need to understand there are two areas of concerns here, okay? So uh, again, this is a general. I'm, I said that I'm not gonna discuss more, but I'm not going to discuss more about the mathematics, but I do have to discuss a little bit of the conceptual stuff. So um, the instrument can sometimes bring the error, uh, can increase the variance. Sometimes the man, your operator, whoever does the measurement can bring you some kind of trouble. So for the instrument, you typically do the calibration. Okay, calibration. So 
basically you're resetting uh, you're resetting somebody's shouting outside basically you're resetting your scale to the true uh, measurement okay so for example if you look at this picture right here this website is sell, uh, selling the stainless steel weight one pound it means you can use this one pound weight to calibrate okay calibrate whatever uh, measurement tool or scale that you're using for your organization so i don't know if you have heard about that uh, the one kilogram weight is kept in somewhere in a museum it's very important because uh, whenever we need to measure accurate one kilogram we always need to use this type of tool this type of weight to calibrate our measurement tools okay uh, many organizations must ensure traceability by keeping records that their own measuring equipment has been calibrated it's just like you you're seeing in an elevator you see that when this elevator has been checked and things like that that your organizations are required to maintain the records of calibration think about the pharmaceutical companies or where um, manufacturers that make something that sensitive impact to human bodies so in that case less dosage or more dosage can both be um, dangerous therefore it is very important that they calibrate their tools um, as often as possible and then for men's case uh, in addition to provide good training it is really difficult to reduce the measurement that is caused by man so the therefore the approach is that we control for the errors caused the man, caused by man after the measurement is co uh, collected so we subtract the errors caused by man from whatever data we collected in that way we can account for the man caused error so your textbook discuss a detailed steps used to control for man caused error but i'm not going to discuss them here uh, in fact i'm not going to discuss the mathematic detail at all because it's going to be just too much so you just need to remember repeatability and reproducibility so basically these are between person difference and within person difference concept that i uh, discussed a little bit in anova okay it uses a similar concept to accounting for uh, both a between people difference and within people difference whenever they measure something okay so uh, they typically conduct an r and r study it's repeatability and reproducibility study as a study of variation in measurement system using statistical analysis so when you do an experiment using the same group of people tell them to repeatedly measure the same thing and collect all the data there is a way for us to accounting for the man caused error so this is a uh, one assignment i'll be giving you for this weekend this is also the part of homework five um, what you're going to measure is you're going to measure the the uh, flight time of the helicopter that you'll be making and also you're, go you're going to be measuring the landing accuracy of the helicopter so you need to come up with what type of measure you're going to be using to measure these whether it is variable attribute whether it's a variable measurement or attribute measurement what is the rationale behind it and what is the difference between those and things like that and uh, you need to submit both your data point and you need to take a picture of your helicopter to show me uh, how elegant it is and you also need to discuss what are some measurement related challenges you have experienced as you try to measure these two areas you'll be discovered that it is not that easy to measure accurately for these things of course if you're not paying attention to the accuracy and precision and you're not going to be under stressed however if you do going after accuracy and the precision and you'll be you'll be you'll be experience huge difficulty in measuring these two things accurately okay again this red dot indicates the landing position as you repeatedly measure its landing position it may, it may, it may land of course the target is here this is our target it may land here it may land here and but overall how do you measure the landing accuracy correctly and and what do you think so that is part of homework number five that including the manufacturing of helicopter manufacturing of helicopter 
I will give you a blueprint and then um, I'll let you do some a series of tests. For detailed instruction, I'm going to provide later at the at some other modules. Okay, so with that, I'm ready to move on to process capability measurement. So the section one is more like a generic discussion about different area, different concerns in the measurement. And in the process capability measurement, we're going to discuss one simple example of a measurement. Um, no, one simple example of measures okay that we can utilize to assess the current state of our manufacturing system or service system uh, whichever it is so before that i'd like to offer a brief uh, review on the empirical rules uh, especially the empirical rules um, is the empirical rules is very important rule okay it tells a story about the normal distribution okay as you can see this is a normal distribution Empirical rule is nothing but it tells you within three standard deviation distance, okay? Before the average, this is mu, this is average. The before the average, three standard deviation. After the average, standard deviation. Within this range, you will have around 99.7% of data points concentrated okay it means most of the items will be concentrated within three standard deviation point okay therefore if you are aiming for a manufacturing system or you're targeting to construct a manufacturing system um, that can produce most of things within three standard deviation okay assuming that this is your specification limit, okay? Lower spec limit. Then your defect rate will be controlled under 0.3%, okay? So within two standard deviation distance, I think you'll have, gosh, I had to do the calculation. So you'll have about, I think you will be having about 93%-ish uh, data points concentrated within that range. Let me run the calculation real quick. Um, 2.35 multiplied by 2. Yeah, you'll have, you'll have, did I say, yeah, 99.7 is for three standard deviation. Here is 95%. Within two standard deviation distance, you'll have 95% of the concentration of math mass within one standard deviation before and after your average you'll have 68 percent of mass concentrated in that range okay so 68 95 here is 99 seven percent okay so this is what empirical rules is all about so keep this in mind and would like to We'd like to keep our specification limit on or beyond the three standard deviation. Therefore, the defect rate can be as little as possible. So how do you capture that insight more systematically using process capability index? That is going to be something I'd like to discuss in upcoming sections.